Yo, what's up, guys? Lockout man in the truck on the 30 podcast. What's going on with you guys? I hope you guys are having a beautiful morning. What is going on with you? It is about five o'clock. I just woke up. I know you did. I know you did. You just woke up trying to let the people know what's going on. But this is Lockout Men, and I'm here to let people know that I'm sending a super shout out to MYZJ Life. Thank you for coming into the comment session and leaving your comment. I really do appreciate it. I do appreciate the support as well. If you guys want to get shout out in the next video, all you got to do is like this video. Just like it. That's all you got to do. Like it. And in the comments below, hashtag shout out. All right. Let's get back at it. Got fresh. And now I'm here for you guys. Went to the casino last night. Had a good time at the tables. Now, I know I told you guys I wasn't going to mess with the tables no more. And I haven't. I haven't messed with the tables in about two to three months and that and that good two to three months uh, sit out worked it in my favor last night. So yes, it was it was a good time at the table. Came back out, got something to eat, went to bed, got up, and I'm here doing this podcast for you guys first thing in the morning. I don't have to get my load, and I mean I don't have to get my load in the in the delivery until maybe about eight. So I decided since I got some time, I'll come on here and chop it up with you guys. What's going on with you? Well, I got some, I got a few things to talk about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's start off with. The rookie questions in these Facebook groups, man. I know you guys come in these Facebook groups and y'all ask these questions and, and y'all kind of hoping that y'all will get a good answer. But sometimes the answers in these Facebook groups could be good and then other times could be bad and then other times it's just downright ugly. You know what I'm saying? You come in, ask a legit question, and then you got some guys in there that just want to be stupid. You know what I'm saying? You want to know about what's the best GPS. You want to know about what's the best driving companies. You want to know about how to do whatever. You want to know about if you get a ticket. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? You thought that these groups can't help you out. It can. It really can. You know what I'm saying? Some of the guys in there are leg are legitimately there to to help, give advice, and, you know, but you got others in there that just want to just give you shit, period. So let me just get to it. So this one particular question that's been asked many of times, many a times. And that question is, hey, I just got my CDL and uh, I want to know what's, what company that I can get out there local. Or what company can I get out there that'll give me the best money? Or, or I wanna I, I wanna come home every week, and you know yada yada yada. But you're brand new. Let me tell you something, new Jack. You're brand new. You gotta put in the work. You gotta put in the time. You got you when you get your CDL, you brand new. You know what I'm saying? Unless you drove trucks prior, you know what I'm saying? You brand new, bruh. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get that best job right off the rip. No companies is not gonna get you give you that first seat if you never ever drove a truck. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna have to put in the time. And I'm telling you right now, the money's ugly. A lot of a lot of recruiters, I know what the recruiters tell you because I talk to them all the time. They'll tell you, oh, you're gonna make sixty thousand dollars. $80,000, six figures in the first year. You know, you're going to get the, the, the sign-on bonus. You're going to get this. You're going to get that, yada, yada, yada. But you're not. You're not. And I'm and this is coming from experience. My first year, I think I did maybe about 30, 34, 35 in my first year. When you come on, your, your experience level is zero. So that amount of money that they're going to give you to drive the truck is not going to be what you're looking for at first. So your best bet is to come in and not think about the money. That's what I did. Not think about the money because the money is going to be ugly. When you get out there with a trainer, 
you only gonna get like four you're gonna get like maybe anywhere between four to seven hundred dollars a week you know that's going out with the trainer for about a couple of weeks and then when you come back your cent per mile is going to be anywhere from like in the 30s to maybe the top 40s you know what i'm saying and the miles you may get the miles but sometimes the miles is not there you got to put in the time bruh now i used to say long time ago you put in a year you're gucci you know what I'm saying? You put in that first year, you Gucci. I used to say that all the time because that's what I used to hear. I heard it when I went through school. Yo, you put in a year, you Gucci. You can go anywhere you want. But nowadays, you need more than a year. You're going to need at least, at least minimum is two, maximum is three. You know what I'm saying? And in the first year, that's what you're supposed to concentrate on is your experience. Get your experience in your first year. Get your experience in your second year with that company. So not only that you're getting your experience, but you're getting your background taken care of as well. Because a lot of companies don't want to mess with you if you job jump from company to company to company to company. You know, you worked at Swift. You worked at Prime. You worked at uh, Knight. You worked at U.S. Express all in a span of six months. And a lot and a lot of legitimate companies that's looking for experienced drivers that's like uh for like two years or more, they look at that. They look at that. So in the first year you you went you had like 10, 15 companies already under your belt. And for what? You know what I'm saying? So listen, listen to what I'm telling you. You gotta put the time in. Stop coming in the Facebook group asking that question because I'm just saying. This is just my opinion, all right? You're not going to get that Gucci job first time out. Now, your second or third time around, then yes. The money is there. The, the, the industry is good. Well, it ain't that good considering the fact that the blood path is still continuing. And we'll talk about that in a second. But um, but you'll be Gucci once you get your, uh, once you get your time up, all right? You'll be Gucci on that. All right, let me uh, let me throw this at you. So I, I just mentioned about how I felt about, you know, the, the, the rookies coming in asking that particular question. Now, I hope you guys don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me, please. Don't get mad at me. It's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Face, I mean, uh, YouTube give me this platform, and I'm going to use it to the best of my ability. Now, look, there's, you know, I mentioned that the bloodbath is continuing. First, it was it was a lot of companies, so many companies I can't even count. But the last two, which is Celadon and GDS, both of them folded. Both of them shut their doors, leaving drivers stranded for the holidays. Hopefully, these drivers are able to bounce back. They should be able to bounce back. You know, if you got your CDLs and your medical card on point, bounce back. Shout out to the GDS drivers, though, being that they're from Ohio. You're from Ohio? Hit me up, man. Just get me, get at me in my uh, Gmail. It's lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com, and maybe I can uh, I can help you out with your uh, with your job search here in Ohio. All right. Um, a couple of companies is merging. Uh, I heard through this one YouTuber that, you know, he'd been with his company for about three years that he'd been there. He used to be, you know, he used to work for U.S. Express, too. But the company that he's at is going through a merger. And that's kind of that kind of stuck me right there because I thought the company that he was working for was was legit. You know what I'm saying? But I guess, you know, uh, things happen and, you know, they making power moves that will affect the company as well as the drivers so like i said before you got to always look for the writing on the wall and the writing has been written because he came out on his youtube and started talking about uh his companies now how do you guys feel about mergers you know what i'm saying you you rocking out for a company for a long time and now a new company that's buying your company is coming in and they and of course they're going to come in and do some some changes some changes that may affect you as a driver as far as how you getting men i mean how you making money and how you getting your miles you know that fleet manager 
they might change fleet managers on you or something like that but i don't know i'm going to open up that forum to you guys leave it in the comments below how do you guys feel about mergers that's is that a warning sign of things to come you know you just had heartland just brought out a certain company you got knight that came in and swallowed up swift you got this company right here that he's talking about uh that's being brought out he's and he says it's a good company so i don't know and then there's another company that i've seen i can't remember but i i, I think it's like two tanker companies coming together to making one may uh one mega company so i'm going to leave that open for a discussion in the uh comments for, comments below so definitely let me know how you guys feel about the mergers all right of these uh trucking companies like i said is that is that something that's something that is something right all right yo all right so before i get in before i get into this i wanted to let you guys know i was down in florida just past week i mean it was a good trip i wish i could get down there more often which i will probably end up doing next year but I, I want to get down there and start experiencing Florida because the last two times that I got down there, I experienced it. It was it was good, but, you know, it's kind of ugly. And that was early this year. And then this time I got down there, it was only a get in and get out type situation. But next time when I get down to Florida, I'm gonna bring my I'm gonna bring my swim trunks, man. Come on, I'm I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to get to uh, Disneyland or some shit like that. Come on, Uber. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to try and get down there. Something. I want to do something while I'm down there. But anyway, this right here, and this is funny because I was just there. <laughs> this right here, man, man killed in a truck stop shooting was trying to retrieve truck from fired truck driver. Woo that's ugly. That That's ugly right there. A fired truck driver was... Uh, was was the one that started this shooting and and had this mass backup on i-10 or i-95 is that oh i-10 it was i it was on i-10 it says new details emerging about a series of shooting that that originated at a florida truck stop yesterday and ended in a police standoff the initial shooting occurred on the 19th when I was down there at a pilot truck stop at Baldwin, Florida. As a matter of fact, what makes this thing so interesting is because I was in the area when this was going on. So I am damn glad that I wasn't at that pilot. But look, as I said before, these truck drivers, we, we are a different type of beast out here, for real sometimes you know i know that we tell you guys hey go talk to the truck drivers find out what the truck drivers feel see what they see what they going through this that and the other whatever but sometimes it's best to leave us the fuck alone <laughs> you know what i'm saying it is because you know ain't no telling what this man feeling like when he rolled out the side of the bed this morning maybe he got that bad phone call or him and his dispatcher got into it or whatever the case he might be going through he probably might be having some suicidal thoughts like this dude right here you know what i'm saying so this young man ain't thinking nothing of it he got fired and he went to go and get the truck so in other words the company was putting him out right then and there at the uh at the fuel stop because you can't you you can't go nowhere without a company not knowing where their trucks is at trust me they got GPS on their trucks. They might not have it on the trailer, but they damn sure have it on the truck. They know where their truck is at. And when they tell you, when they tell you to park that motherfucker, then you better park it. You know what I'm saying? You 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 think you you think okay, well I'm going to uh, you know, I'm I got fired or or the or I'm going to go home. You think they're going to let you take their truck all the way home? That's not going to work, bruh. That's not going to work. They're going to they gonna have you to park their truck when they want you to park their truck, and they want you to leave their truck right there. If not, they're going to call the police and have the police get you. But in this situation, they sent somebody else 
to go and get the uh, go and get the truck. This argument ensues between the suspect, both shot, Phillips and Partial. Phillips died at the scene, scar- uh, and Partial was airlifted to the hospital. The shots, the suspect opened fire on police. Three officers returned fire and struck the suspect. The suspect went to the hospital. Florida said at least one of the dr- one of the one of the person is dead following the truck stop this morning. Here's some pictures right here for you guys. And here's the video of the shootout. That must be the truck right there. Yeah, right there. That must that must be the truck. So yeah, that that must be the that must be the truck right there. And it's a developing story, so they still investigating the situation. So I I would I would think that the way, you know, it probably started off that, you know, they said they was arguing, the guy must have came up here and said, Hey, you know, I'm from such and such, you know, I gotta take the truck and the and the other guy must have been like, Look, I'm not giving you nothing, I'm trying to get home and and a fight ensued and, and somebody pulled out a gun just like that huh yeah there go that beeping noise beeping noise haven't been beeping all t- i mean all damn day and now it's gonna start beeping hopefully it ain't nothing serious you know i, I gotta do my pre-trip before i leave up out of here usually when that beeping noise come on my uh my uh my coolant level is low luckily for me it's not that uh, i'm not that far away from um uh from this pilot right here in columbus hey by the way speaking of pilot (laughs) speaking of pilot this pilot right here in columbus you don't want to fuck with that number one it is small narrow and ugly that's if you ever decide to come and if you're in columbus and you want somewhere to park for the night Come over to the casino. <laughs> I'm for real. I'm not just saying that because, you know, I'm saying that the casino got ample truck parking over here. If you get here at an amplicable enough time. But if you get over there to uh to that pilot, it's going to be ugly. All right. All right. So, so what else in the news? What is else in the news? I'm about to tell you what else in the news. Well, I came across this video right here of a young lady being sideswiped on I-77 by a semi. Now, she claims, allegedly, that the truck came over in her lane and tore her stuff up. I call bullshit on this. Come on. Let's let's watch it together. Well, we don't need that. Let's watch it together. I-77 left this car smashed up pretty badly. Take a look at the damage stretching across the length of the car and the side mirror completely ripped off. Now, wait a minute. She said the side mirror was completely ripped off. Do that mirror look like it's completely ripped off? (laughs) I'm just saying. Look at the damage stretching across the length of the car and the side mirror completely ripped off. This driver tells us the tractor trailer who hit her never even stopped. NBC Charlotte's Brianna Harper walks us through those terrifying moments behind the wheel and shares this victim's warning to other drivers. Well, this is certainly everyone's worst nightmare. That driver says she was traveling along I-77 when she was sideswiped Uh by an 18-wheeler. She says the worst part is she was in an area where there was a barrier and no median, so she says that made it hard for her to try to avoid the crash at all. Started as a simple Saturday afternoon drive on Interstate 77. And in an instance, that drive turned to disaster for 18 year old Allison Friedrich. It's always been a worst fear of mine. She says as she was traveling in the far right lane on I 77, a tractor trailer to the left of her began merging her way. In the back end of his trailer just sideswiped the car. And here's a look at all the damage. All dented in here. 
Mm -hmm. Thank God this glass didn't break. Friedrich says in that moment, everything happened so quickly that all she could do was panic. The first moment, it was so scary, like it wasn't even a thought to chase after him. She tells us the truck took off and the cars around her at the time just kept moving too. Now, she says that the truck, she was in the far right lane. You're in the far right lane, right? Let me see. Left, you know, this left lane. And you're in the right lane. So if you're in the far right lane... Think about it. You're in the far right lane. You must have been distracted. Okay. Now I'm I don't I wasn't there. I don't know what you was doing. You know, you had your you had your friend in your car. Both of y'all probably might have been lollygagging, been distracted. Y'all probably was on the phone or whatever. But that's just a lot of possibilities and a lot of probabilities. I don't know. I wasn't there. So I'm not speculating on what happened. But by the damages of this vehicle right here, by the damages, it looks as though that you wasn't yielding to the truck that was getting over. You know what I'm saying? I, by the looks of the damages, you was trying to, like, beat the truck or whatever, and you just got clipped by the back, uh, back end of his trailer and just, shh. Because I'm sure if the driver would have saw you, I'm sure the accident wouldn't have happened and he probably would have pulled over. But I'm not going to go and play this uh, this entire clip. I just want you guys to see what's going on by distracted driving. Situations like that happens. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got you over here driving. Even stopped and be. Hold on. You over here driving and you get into a situation. And all of a sudden, this happens. You know, I, I I can't say I blame the driver. I can't say that I blame the passenger. But the driver of the truck probably didn't even know that he that he that he clipped you, and you know did the damages that he did because you know maybe he wasn't paying attention either. But I think if you was in the far right. As you claim, and you said the driver was getting over, maybe you should have uh, kind of like backed off. Maybe that didn't happen. I don't know, guys. Leave your comments in the comments below. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just, I'm just, you know, talking, you know, giving my opinion and all like that. And everybody has one. Everybody has an opinion, right? You know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. So. Let me uh jump on this uh let me jump on this right quick before I leave you guys and I do appreciate you guys staying with me but hey how do you guys feel about memberships how do you feel about um uh, and I'm not talking about just you know I'm not just talking about uh YouTube I well yes I am I am talking about YouTube in general but in the there's different spaces on YouTube that I think that this membership thing is pretty good at now, if you like a gamer, you're at home 24 hours a day, you're in front of your computer 24 hours a day, and all you're doing is playing games 24 hours a day. You have time to play games, you got time to edit, you got time to stream, and, you know, people coming in watching your streams and they want to join a membership to pay you every month for the content that you're, that you're generating for them. I get that. But in this trucking field, all right, do you guys want to come in and pay a membership of $5, $10, $20? It's like different tiers. You, are you guys willing to come in to pay uh, a truck driver every month for the content that he's giving? I... I I'm on a fence. I'm really am. I'm on a fence. Number one, I don't, there's no time. At least I don't think it is. It's only 24 hours in a day and 14 of them hours is you, you on duty driving. And the other 10, the other 10 is you sleeping or you resting to drive for the next uh, t uh, 11 or 14 hours. So, 
there's only one person in in this niche right here that I think that 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 will be uh will probably be good membership is the one YouTuber that has his bullpen therapy every every weekend on Saturday. But I don't even think he needs a membership because his bullpen is already the membership. You know, and I never heard him saying, yo, come and join, you know, come and join my membership. I would give you exclusive content and all like that. Now, other you other trucking you uh truck driver YouTubers that's opting into this membership, I'm not one of them, but I really don't think that the game, you know, the game I'm giving for free. I really don't think that I got any exclusive content for you guys to pay. All my exclusivity is right here in the open for you for free. You come on my channel for whatever reason and you see me chop it up, you know, whatever I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving you the game for free. You know, I'm not going to I'm I'm not going to, you know, have you to charge a membership. If I wanted to do all of that, then I would have started a Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Hey, come over to Patreon and I got exclusive content for you. But look, let me tell you something. This YouTube thing is not my bread and butter. You know, my bread and butter is driving this truck. You know what I'm saying? So, and also why I'm thinking about it is I don't think it's fair for you guys. You guys have been rocking out for, with me for the longest. I know who's my I know who's my day ones and who my loyalist is. I know the ones that that supports my channel, you know, by by way of commenting and by way of you know hooking a brother up with you know any donations via coffee, PayPal, and uh, Cash App. I know you guys, so there's no reason why I should ask you guys to hey come over here and be in this membership program with me so I can so I can get you exclusivity. I think that's going to alienate the subscribers that you already generated. So the way they feel like, oh, okay, well, I've been coming over to you for years and all like that. You know, I might not watch you every day or, you know, follow you every day, but I do come over and see what you're doing. And then all of a sudden, you you get to that door, you knock on that door, and you like, hey, can I come in? No, you got to give me $5 to get into the door to hear what this uh, truck driver got to say. Why should I do that? And he's been, you know, giving me the same game for, you know, for years. Well, because, you know, I, I want to connect. I want to be one with I want to be one with my, uh, with my, with with my people. I want to be one with them, one with your people. <laughs> so right here, YouTube is making this thing into a business now. It's not even it's not even fun anymore. I'm cool with just getting the ad revenue. I, I don't have to I don't have to generate anything else off of YouTube. Just YouTube, just give me my ad revenue money and I'm I'm cool with that, man. Do you guys want to donate to me? I'm cool with that, man. You know what I'm saying? But YouTube is trying to make this a business. Use channel memberships to engage more deeply with your biggest fans. I'm not going to use channel memberships to engage with my biggest fans. My biggest fans are the reason why I'm here. And I don't want to exclude any future fans. I don't want to do that. They'll come over there, see the membership button down at the bottom and all like that. Like, yo, I got I to gotta pay. And what, what am I getting out of this? Oh, I'm, I'm just getting a badge or button. Uh, what is what it say? Offer special perks to your YouTube fans who pay you five dollars a month. That varies. You get seventy percent of the net revenue growth, and YouTube gets thirty. Chat will chat will channel members via community posts and deliver all perks to show your appreciation. I show my appreciation every time when I come on this thing. I show my appreciation all the time when you guys show me yours by liking, subscribing, commenting, and supporting the channel. I don't have to turn around and make 
any separate content for exclusivity. That's just too much time that I don't have. You know what I'm saying? I like what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I like giving this, but it's just, look, my setup is about 20 minutes. Getting all this set up is about 20 to 30 minutes. Coming up with show I coming up with show ideas throughout the day. Uh sitting down in front of this computer, getting my thoughts out. All this takes time. Here we go. <laughs> That's what I said. It should be recording. All right. So as I was saying, all this takes time. And I, I really do appreciate you guys giving me the time. And by that, like I said, the only thing I I give you guys my appreciation. You know, I, I thank you guys at the beginning of the, you know, I shout out to, you know, whoever's, you know, shout, you know, wants a shout out in my channel. I do that. And, you know, I give you guys the game that you want. Y'all have any questions, I answer it. I'll come on and do, you know, come on and do a lot of stuff. And I don't have to do exclusivity. I just think that is just too much time that I don't have trying to build another, engage more deeply with my biggest fans. Because all of you guys are my biggest fans. Just by you guys clicking on here and watching me right now, y'all my biggest fans, y'all, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> y'all my biggest fans, and I really do appreciate you guys coming on. So with that said, I am going to end this on the 30 today. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, donating, whatever you want to do. If you guys want to get at me, hit me up in lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. You can talk, you can chat, uh, you can talk, chat, you can chop it up with me there. If you guys want to come on this podcast, yo, definitely hit me up. I'll bring you on and we'll chop it up. I'll do an interview with you or however you want to do it. Yo, lockout men, that is me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. You know what I'm saying? Keep it open. Keep it safe out there. Keep it going. Keep it trucking. You know what I'm saying? Keep it trucking. Come to this channel. Come to this channel. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.